this is. It's been no, worse, no though. No case to answer. Mark Clattenburg, one of the game's leading referees, welcomed the decision, saying he hopes no one else had to go through a similar experience. Referees and their assistants communicate with each other during Premier League games using microphones. In future, their conversations will be recorded to provide evidence should such allegations arise again. The referees' union is seeking an apology from Chelsea. The club insists they had a duty of care <coughs> to their employees. And that they it's not important that I get in for this talk, but I like to Tim catch Tottenham it. Tottenham fans have been injured in an attack in Rome where Spurs will play Lazio tonight. It's believed that one of them was stabbed and is in a serious condition in hospital. Italian police say around 30 men armed with iron bars went on the rampage in a pub where the I've got nearly an hour before the concert. Five Italian men have been arrested. The car pass. In Doris has said should work. Becoming the first to put off the ITV show I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Stories, who's been suspended from the Conservative Parliamentary Party, insisted that party managers did give her permission to have a month away though she hadn't told them about the show. An island in the South Pacific has been undiscovered by an Australian research team. Sandy Island appears on a number of maps and charts as a sizable strip of land, but when scientists travelled to the exact coordinates, they found nothing but deep water. Duncan Kennedy reports from Sydney. Oh Sandy Island exists on marine charts, it exists on world maps, it even exists on Google Earth and allegedly sits between Australia and New Caledonia in the South Pacific. But when scientists on board a research ship steamed to where it should be, it wasn't there. Dr Maria Seton, who's on the ship, says the team was expecting land, not 1,400 metres of deep ocean. She said it left everyone puzzled. We knew where we were, we had GPS on the ship, but we just had this mismatch of data, which was coming from our scientific databases of world coastlines and the navigation charts on the ship. It definitely hasn't disappeared. Um, we believe that there was just never an island there. It must have just been an error that has just been propagated through these world maps. <laughs> the island has regularly appeared in scientific publications for the past decade. Australia's Hydrographic Service, which produces the country's nautical charts, says it could just be the result of human error repeated down the years. It will no doubt leave cartographers everywhere rushing to undiscover Sandy Island forever. The headlines again. The BBC has appointed a new Director General, the Chief Executive of the Royal Opera House, Tony Hall, who's also a former head of BBC News. European Union leaders are meeting in Brussels for what are expected to be tough negotiations on the EU's next long-term budget. David Cameron has repeated his demand for a freeze in spending. The Chief Constable of Avon and Somerset is to step down after being told to reapply for his job by the area's newly elected police and crime commissioner. Large parts of England and North Wales are facing significant disruption because of strong winds and torrential rain. BBC News. Read by Harriet Cass. In a moment, an explanation of our development from Andrew Lawrence via stand-up comedy, sketch and song, of course. Before that, let's take a look ahead to next... Shakespearean actor, but uh, in drag, it is will as privates and parade which until the 1st of December. It was wonderful to have them all in the studio. You can listen again to all that, of course. You can listen to all our programmes for a week uh, afterwards, and uh, you can download several things of this week. Fabulous Christine Brewer was with me earlier in the week. Semyon Bitchkov celebrating his 16th birthday, conductor extraordinaire. He's at the Barbican on Sunday. And um, the tribute to Charles Jennings, really, who went to the Handel House in London, where Handel lived and gave his uh, librettist to the respect he deserved. I'll be in Salford tomorrow. Rachel Colley Dalbo will be there playing for us. Ingrid Fleeter will be playing live for us and we'll be celebrating his genius and his genius in the world and all the college music and playing live as well. But I'm ready for it's time for composer of the week, Donald McLeod. Well, 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 we finally got moving. Lose the signal in a few minutes. In a few moments, we'll, you'll definitely go off.
This could be interesting because I want to make a right turn and then another right turn here. 